Heavenly Father, we thank you this day. We bless your name for Christ. Thank you for your love, for your grace, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, because you've thought about us and you brought us into your kingdom. Thank you for all that Jesus went through, his suffering, his agony, his cry. My God, my Father, my Father, why have you forsaken me just because of us? But Lord, we thank you because the cross is not the end. He died, he was buried, and he rose again. And now, Lord, we come to celebrate the resurrection of Christ. And we pray that the power of that resurrection will come to everyone in Jesus' name. We pray that the joy of resurrection, the power of resurrection, and the celebration of resurrection will be upon every one of us in Jesus name that Lord everything you died to purchase everything you rose up to give unto the church this church with every member every adult every brother every sister every child every boy every girl will receive everything in Jesus name be glorified in every life be glorified in this retreat. Be glorified in every retreat where we're meeting together to honor your name, glorify you in Jesus' name. We we'll pray, Lord, as we listen to your word now, your spirit will take everything we hear and will apply to every heart. And Lord, a new life, a resurrection life, a risen life, a righteous life, a renewed life, you grant to everyone in Jesus' name. We lift up Jesus. We pray that you lift us together. Lift us up together with the Lord Jesus Christ. That Lord may live a higher life in the Lord in Jesus name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus name we pray. And the people of God said. Amen. We're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 14 And God has both raised up the Lord And will also raise up us by his own power Here we find what we're reading about the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ And then the spirit of the Lord is assuring us That as the Father by his power, his majesty, his glory As he raised up Jesus Christ He will raise us up as well That's why we're looking at the message partaking of his resurrection There is no doubt he rose again there's no doubt he rose from the dead and there is no doubt of that resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ but now the assurance of scripture is that that same power that raised him from the dead will also walk in our lives God has raised up the Lord and he will also raise up us by his own power we're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 15 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I read from verse 20, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. Verse 23, but every man in his own order, Christ, the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. You see that? It says Christ, the first fruit. He is risen. And now we are to be the next. And with you, we shall be risen. You will partake of that in Jesus' name. In verse 51, verse 51 says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. We shall all be changed. You'll take part in that. That is when he comes and the dead in Christ shall rise up. And then we which are alive will be magnetized up, we're caught up together with him in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. It's telling us that we're totally, we're fully, we're completely identified with Christ. Verse 52, it says, in a moment, in a twink of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall be raised incorruptible. Jesus rose from the dead and the dead in Christ the believers who have died in the Lord it says they're going to rise and they say and we shall be changed second Corinthians chapter 4 
and I'm reading from verse 14, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 14. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. It's telling us that the assurance we have concerning the death of Jesus, the burial of Jesus, the resurrection of Jesus, and the life after the transfer of Jesus, that that same experience will be ours. It's telling us actually that we are complete, every believer is completely identified with Christ. Can I remind you, number one, in his crucifixion, we're crucified with him. Number two, in his death, we're dead, we died with him. And number three, in his burial, we're buried with him. Number four, in his resurrection we are risen with him number five in his ascension as was taken up to heaven with you we're going to experience the rapture we're going to ascend with him number six in reigning we're going to reign with him can i show you number one his crucifixion identified with him galatians chapter two galatians chapter two i'm reading from verse 20 galatians chapter two we're looking at verse 20 it says i am crucified with christ i the old me the self-life the self-centered life i am crucified with christ nevertheless i live a new me a risen me a resurrected me a new person a new creature in christ nevertheless i live yet not i but christ liveth in me and the life which i now live in the flesh i live by faith i live by the faith of the son of god who loved me and gave himself for me he's saying that there's a new life that new life comes out of that resurrection I died with him. I was crucified with him. I died with him. I was buried with him. And I'm risen with him. And because of that resurrection, the power of that resurrection in my life, it says, I now lay by the face of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Crucified with him. Romans chapter 6. In Romans chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 6. Romans chapter 6, we're looking at verse 6 there, telling us about the beginning of of that identification with it. we partook of his crucifixion we partook of his death we partook of his burial we partook of his resurrection we're going to partake in his ascension and we're going to partake in our reigning together with him romans chapter 6 verse 6 knowing this that our old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed you see the reason why we're identified with him in his crucifixion that the body of sin might be destroyed that henceforth we should not serve sin will not serve sin anymore in jesus name i come to the next thing that is our being dead with him second timothy chapter 2 Second Timothy chapter 2, I'm reading there from verse 11. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 11. It says, it is a faithful saying. For if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. Why are we going over crucifixion with him? Because you have to be crucified with him before you can identify with him his resurrection. Why are we going over being dead with him? You have to be dead with him before you can live with him. Before the resurrection will come in your life. This has to take place. Number one, crucified with him. Old self crucified self-centeredness crucified old man crucified the old you and the ancient you the old man all that crucified so that you go on through the whole scene and become dead with him dead to the world dead to satan dead to evil spirit and dead to the powers that held you in the past there is a real experience of being dead with him and it says on that basis we are dead with him well then live together with him well if we are dead with him i've been buried with him come back to romans chapter 6 we are buried with him as well in romans chapter 6 i'm reading there from verse 4 and verse 5 romans chapter 6 verse 4 therefore we're buried with him by baptism into death 
You see that? It says, we're crucified with him on the one hand, and then we're dead with him, and then we're buried with him. It says that like as Christ was raised up. You see, it is all connected with the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He was dead, then he was risen. And then we died with him and they will rise up with him as well. And the new life we live is the evidence of that resurrection. The new life we live is the evidence that truly we're crucified with him. And truly we died with him. And truly we're buried with him. And now we have the evidence because look at resurrection. Spiritual resurrection. It says in that verse 4 that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father even so we also should walk in newness of life verse 5 for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection they are all connected together you died with him you are going to rise with him you are buried with him you are going to rise with him and now it comes to resurrection i come to colossians chapter 3 colossians chapter 3 and I'm reading there from verse 1. Colossians chapter 3, we're looking at verse 1. It says in verse 1, over here, what the Lord is telling us, if ye then be risen with Christ, resurrection, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth up, is seated on the right hand of God. Set your affection, set your desires, set your pleasure, set your dreams, set your focus and set your aspiration set your affection on things above not on things on the earth for ye are dead and your life is hid, to, is hid with Christ in God when Christ who is our life shall appear then shall ye also appear with him with him that is when he comes again you're going to appear with him in glory I pray that will be your experience in Jesus name I said that will be your experience in Jesus' name. He was crucified. We were crucified with him. He died and so we died with him. He was buried and so we are buried with him. He rose again and so we rise with him. He has ascended to heaven. He is now seated on the right hand of majesty on high. And we are seated together with him in heavenly places. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 6. It's telling us that all the way through, all the way through, from the crucifixion to the death, to the burial, to the resurrection, to the ascension, and to the reigning, and to sitting on the right hand of majesty on high, we are together with him. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. And has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You see, he's done that already. It's an experience of a real child of God. And you know that our lives will reflect where we're seated. Our lives will reflect where we're dwelling. Our lives will reflect where we, where we stay. And if you're lifted up in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, it will reflect in your life. It will reflect in your prayer. It will reflect in your understanding. It will it will reflect your boldness. It will reflect in everything you do because now you are seated in heavenly places together with the Lord Jesus Christ, partaking of his resurrection. Partaking of his resurrection. There are things we are going to look at. Number one, the proof of his resurrection. The proof of his resurrection. The question is, how are we sure that after he died, he rose again? How are we sure that after Jesus Christ was crucified and he died and was buried, that on the third day, according to his word, he rose again? The proof of his resurrection. Number two, the power of his resurrection. Because he rose from the dead, there is a kind of power, a divine power, a supernatural power, a superhuman power, a kingdom power. The power of the spirit that comes along with that resurrection. The power of his resurrection. Number three, the promise of our resurrection. The promise of our resurrection. And that promise will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. Number one, we're looking at the proof of his resurrection. The proof of his resurrection. Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28. I'm reading from verse 1. Matthew 
chapter 28 and we're reading from verse 1 the assurance of the certainty of the proof the evidence that he rose from the dead the proof of his resurrection i'm looking at matthew chapter 28 verse 1 in the end of the sabbath as he began to dawn toward the first day of the week came mary magdalene and the other mary to see the sepulchre and behold there was a great earthquake for the angel of the lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it his countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow and for fear of him the keepers did shake and became as dead men and the angel answered and said unto the women fear not ye see fear not ye for i know that you seek jesus which was crucified he is not here for he is risen as he said come see the place where the lord lay do you remember an angel announced his conception an angel sang before those uh, shepherds about his birth and then an angel held him at the time of his temptation and when he was praying in Gethsemane the angel came and strengthened him and now he was dead he was buried he rose from the dead and an angel was there already the angel said you women you're looking for the living among the dead come and see the place where the Lord lay and the angel that told about his conception and it was right about his birth and it was right and about his uh, helping him over temptation and it was right and powerful and then he gets him and he helped him when he prayed and was sweating like drops of blood and the angel now is also here and the angel is saying he's not dead anymore come see the place where the Lord lay he is risen look at verse 7 and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead and behold they go before you into Galilee. There shall you see him. Lo, I have told you. See what the angel said. The angel said, If you want to know the truth, I've told you the truth. If you want to have a proof of his resurrection, I just give you the evidence now. His dead body is no more there. We rolled away the stone. That's a great earthquake. And Jesus rose from the dead. In that same way, your life that is dormant will rise from the dead. Your life that is kind of is like is so so live. The energy of the spirit is not there, and the power of resurrection is not there. And I come to announce to you this day that that resurrection power is coming upon your life in Jesus' name. All that's in the mind that is dead, the brain that is dead, the vision that is dead, and the energy that is dead, and every part of the body that is important, resurrection power coming upon that dead part of yours that the Lord is saying, do not be afraid because he rose from the dead. You too, you will rise in Jesus' name. And then he goes on to say in verse 8, and they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy. And they and did run to bring the disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them. What else are you looking for? They saw the angel, and then the angel told them they wanted to go and tell the disciples. And while they were going, Jesus met them and said, All oh, hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him is Jesus risen from the dead I said did Jesus rise from the dead of course he rose from the dead and they saw him and it says and, and then said Jesus unto them be not afraid go tell my bread go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee and they shall see me or will see the Lord in Jesus name Look at this now. When they were going, behold, some of the watch, the guys that were supposed to watch his dead body, so that the disciples will not come and steal the dead body away and say that he's risen. It says, Some of the watch came into the city and he showed unto the chief priest all the things that were done. And when they were assembled with the elders and are taking counsel, they gave what? large money unto who unto the soldiers that's what to call hush money hush don't talk about it we know he rose from the dead and you said that you fell down 
Are you said there was a great earthquake? Are you said his body is no more there? And you come to report to us now, you have evidence, you have the proof of his resurrection. Hush. Don't talk about that. So I can preach, we can protect our religion and preserve our position. You see, that's the evidence that he rose from the dead. The very, the very fact that they bribed them and they gave them money. And he said, don't talk about that. That's a good evidence. Say, say ye. His disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. Ah, we're guards, we're soldiers. If we tell the authorities we're slept, we'll get into trouble. Look at verse 14. And if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you. Tell this lie. Cover it up. Don't say that he rose from the dead. Everything is pointing to the fact that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. The angel said he rose from the dead. Those who men saw him, he rose from the dead. They went to tell his disciples he's risen from the dead. The guards knew. The soldiers knew. He rose from the dead. All those chief priests, they knew. He rose from the dead. This is the proof that Jesus Christ actually rose from the dead. And it, so they took the money and did as they were taught. And the saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. Even the common Jews on the city they said, ah, ah, we know it he rose from the dead and we know it they bribed them to keep quiet they gave them harsh money and we know they tried to quiet in everything and keep everything by that large amount of money they gave them everybody knew he rose from the dead in verse 16 then the 11 disciples went away into galilee or into a mountain where jesus had appointed them and when they saw him they worshiped him and but some doubt they saw him they saw him they saw him the disciples also had evidence that he rose from the dead and jesus now gave the final evidence himself and jesus came and spake and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you and lo i I am with you always. Isn't that the proof that he rose again? I am with you always. When you pray and you are saved, that shows a lie. When you pray and you are healed, that shows it's alive. When you pray and you are delivered, that shows you are alive. When you are having sorrow in your heart and it comes to comfort you, I am with you always. It's not in the grave, it's with you. Where two or three are gathered, they are mine in the midst of them. It's an evidence, it's the proof. He rose again. He says, Behold and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. And the whole church said, he is risen, risen from the dead. That's the proof of his resurrection. I'm reading to you from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 32. Acts chapter 2, verse 32. The proof of his resurrection. Acts chapter 2, verse 32. This Jesus, this Jesus has God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. That's the proof. They could kill these disciples, but they said, well, tell the truth. This is the fact. Nobody wants to die for if you knew something was a lie. And then they say, if you say this, we're going to kill you. And then you still say it. That thing must be true. The disciples knew that the bone of contention between them and all those Pharisees and all those Sadducees, the bone of contention between them and those religious people was mainly the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they kept on saying it. They, kept, they said, we saw him. If we say we didn't see him, that would be a lie. We saw him. And he says, this Jesus has got raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. Therefore, for being by the right hand of God exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this which he now see and hear. The apostles said, You see us being baptized in the Holy Ghost, you see us speaking in new tongues, you see, you hear the new language you are speaking. It is the evidence is not the right hand of the Father, and because it's at the right hand of the Father, He has given us this which you can now see and which you can now hear Acts of the Apostles chapter 5. Acts chapter 5, I'm reading here from verse 27. 
Acts chapter 5, verse 27. The proof of his resurrection. Thank God, my Jesus is risen. I say, thank God, my Jesus is risen. And it's risen not only because he rose in Jerusalem, it's risen in my heart. It's risen in your heart. And the power of that resurrection, look at you today, is going to walk in your life in Jesus' name. As those angels, and that angel came and rolled away the stone, every stone in your life that is blocking you, keeping you there, limiting you there, everything will be rolled off in Jesus' name. A great mighty earthquake will take place and then bulldoze every negative thing out of your life because of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. That resurrection power will walk here today. Will walk in your soul, will walk in your spirit, will walk in your body, will walk in your family in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 27. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we strictly, strictly uh, command you that you should not teach in this name? Behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. They threatened them again. I'm te let me ask you something. You are saying something, and you are not sure about it. And then somebody, people of 40 called you and said, didn't we tell you not to say that again? If you say that again, we're going to deal with you. I know they want to kill you. Will you say that if you're not sure? But because they were sure, because they were certain that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. That's why, with all the threats, they still said, we well, want to tell you, even though you attend, not to say that again, not to teach in that name again, that Jesus rose from the dead. That's the confidence we have when we talk about salvation, about being born again, when we talk about sanctification and holiness, when we talk about Jesus coming back again, and people say, ah, are you so sure? We're so sure because we're sure of his resurrection. Look at it in verse 29, then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we we ought to obey God rather than men. Give me a good amen there. Yeah. That's how you know those who are born again. Those who are born again. We ought to obey God rather than men. That is, you'll obey God rather than your mind. You're going to obey God rather than the people around you. You're going to obey God rather than society. You're going to obey God rather than the religious people all around. The people who are born again, those who are saved and those who are sanctified. It says, we ought to obey God rather than men. And if you think about yourself, if you're sure about the resurrection, you'll be saying, I ought to obey God rather than my mind. How to be God the men around me? How to be God rather than the men that are threatening me? How to be God rather than all the persecutors? That's the assurance you have that Jesus rose from the dead because that resurrection is working in your life. Then you says the God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew and hanged on the tree. They said it again before those persecutors is the proof. It is the evidence that Jesus really rose from the dead. And then in verse 31, him as God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things. So and so also is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost also a witness of his resurrection. The angels are witnesses of his resurrection. And we apostles are witnesses of his resurrection. And those girls are witnesses of his res resurrection. And even those uh, chief uh, priests, they are evidences, they are witnesses of his resurrection. And the common people on the street, they were also witnesses of his resurrection. And you here today, if you are born again, if that resurrection power has come to walk in your life, then you know that you too, you are a witness of of that resurrection and I pray that that assurance of his resurrection that evidence of his resurrection nobody will take it away from your heart in Jesus name you know if you look at Acts of the Apostles chapter 17 that was the thing that made Paul the Apostle and Silas and all his all the other companions to go out and preach to the people because of the certainty because of the assurance and because of the proof the evidence they had about the resurrection we're looking at Acts chapter 17 verse 30 verse 31 Acts of the Apostles chapter 17 verse 30 and in times of this ignorance God winked at 
but now commandest all men everywhere to do what? Tell me out loud. Tell me out loud. To repent because as appointed a day in the which you will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he whom he has ordained, whereof he has given assurance and proven evidence unto all men in that he has raised him from the dead. You see that the evidence and the proof that he rose from the dead, he says he has given that assurance to everyone. And because of that, we're calling upon the people repent and turn and turn unto the Lord and when you turn by his resurrection power it will save in Jesus name I come to point number two now which is the power of his resurrection the power of his resurrection and let me remind you once again it's not enough to be religious there are some people who might say they believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ and they even act drama and they do drama about that about his crucifixion about his belief betrayal and about nailing him to the cross and then you'll find somebody that is stretching his hand and he tied the hand to the cross and then you'll find some people dressing like soldiers and then they have some weaves in their hand and they say they believe in the resurrection and then they take in their drama they take uh, that crucified fellow they take him to the grave and then one day they say he's risen and then he comes forth and they all dramatize that but the power of resurrection is not working in their lives that's religion that's religion you want to go beyond religion and you want to have the power of his resurrection working in your life that's what we're saying that as you have come here that even though now we have the proof of his resurrection we want to go a step further and want to find out about the power of his resurrection when that power of resurrection works in your life what does it do what's the evidence that you have tasted of that resurrection and i pray it will happen in your life I said it will happen in your life. We're looking at Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 7. Philippians chapter 3. And we're looking at verse 7. Philippians chapter 3. We're looking at verse 7. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Uh, Paul the apostle is saying, now Jesus left his glory above. And though that's a great thing, being worshipped by angels and looking at all those streets of God, he left everything. And Paul the apostle said, I'm leaving everything to you. And if you're going to experience the power of his resurrection, there must be some things that appear uh, to you a gift for. They appear to you something necessary. It even, it even looks like indispensable. And you say, because I want to taste of the power of his resurrection. You leave all those things behind. He said, yea, in verse 8, doubtless, I count all things but laws for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the laws of all things, and do count them but dung that I may win Christ. The man was already saved. The time he went Christ. The man was already sanctified. The time he went Christ. The man already had the Holy Ghost power upon his life. The time he went Christ. And the man was already a preacher. The time he went Christ. The man already has revelations of the mysteries of the gospel. And he said, it's not enough. I want more. I need more. That I may win Christ. There is more of Christ for me to know. There is more of Christ for me to experience. There is more of Christ for me to taste. And no matter what I've got, I've gotten saved. I need more i've got sanctified i need more i'm filled with the holy ghost i need more i'm healed i need more i'm delivered and i need more i'm released i need more i'm revived i need more i'm made righteous by the power of christ i need more that's what paul the apostle is saying and if you can say that as well that although you are saved there is more in christ that you need although you are sanctified there is more in christ that you need although you are baptized in the holy ghost there is more in christ Christ you need. Although you have revelation, illumination in the word of God, there is more in Christ that you need, that I may win Christ and be found in him in verse 9, not having my own righteousness, secular, that is uh, the outward righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the face of Christ, the righteousness, which is of God by faith. It says that my pursuit, that my desire, that's my passion, that's my possession, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. 
resurrection. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. When you surrender yourself, you go back to Christ again. You say, Lord, I want to know more of you. I want to have more. I want to possess more of you. That I may know him. That I may win Christ. And have the power of his resurrection. And everything that looks stubborn in your life. That it may be a stubborn habit. The Lord will break it today. The Lord will destroy it today. That's the evidence. That is evidence you are celebrating the joy. You are celebrating Calvary and celebrating the resurrection because it says said that I may know the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His suffering, being made conformable unto His death, made conformable unto His death. First Peter chapter one. I'm reading from verse three. First Peter chapter one. We're looking at verse three. That power needs to work in our lives. If the power of resurrection is not working in our lives all we have is religion and religion is vain religion is useless religion is worthless and it's not going to earn us anything in glory in eternity is the power of resurrection that comes to make real the personality of christ the power of christ and all that christ purchased for us on the cross of calvary in first peter chapter one i'm reading from verse three blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus christ which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of jesus christ is the resurrection of jesus christ the power in that resurrection that begets us again unto a lively hope and it says in verse in verse 4 to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you what makes us to have the hope of heaven is the power of that resurrection working in our lives verse 5 who are kept by the power of god through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time that means that you and i need that power that power because it brings completeness into our lives completeness all the completeness of the virtues of the of the godhead and the virtues of grace and the virtues of godliness it brings into our lives in colossians chapter 2 verse 9 Colossians chapter 2 verse 9 all these benefits coming to us as a result of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ in Colossians chapter 2 reading there from verse 9 for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily anything we need from the Godhead that is from the divine trinity all the fullness of the Godhead dwell in the Lord Jesus Christ and ye are complete in him complete in him which is the head of all principality and power and that's the reason why we want to go on with the Lord and then get more of him get more of him I pray that this morning that more of him you will have in Jesus name more of his peace and more of his power more of his purity more of everything of the riches of, of Christ that has provided on Calvary more and more and more it will grant unto you in Jesus name Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 if ye then be risen with Christ is saying do you say that you understand the resurrection do you say that you accept the resurrection? Do you say that you believe the resurrection? Do you say you are a partaker of that resurrection? If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ seated on the right hand of God. It says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be. If you have, if your treasure is Christ, the risen Christ, your heart will be there in heaven. If heaven, if that's where your treasure is, your heart will be in heaven your mind will be in heaven seek those things which are above it says and not things on the earth set your affections on things above and not things on the earth in verse 4 when christ who is our life shall appear then shall ye also appear with him in glory that's our goal that's where we're going that's our direction we're going to be there in jesus name romans chapter 8 romans chapter 8 i'm reading from verse 11 that resurrection power walking in your soul in your spirit in your body it says in romans chapter 8 verse 11 see the consequence of that resurrection power walking in you resurrection power walking in you romans chapter 8 verse 11 it says if but if the spirit of him that raised up jesus from the dead dwell in your in you 
the spirit that raised him from the dead. You see that? That's what brings the resurrection power into our lives. That spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead. It says, if he dwells in you, then it says, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit that dwelleth in you. Anything that is dead in you this day will be quickened in Jesus' name. An arm that is withered, that is uh, dead, cannot move. This day after we finish and we pray, that withered arm will be risen in Jesus' name. Leg, joint, any part of you that's not functioning anymore is dead, doesn't have any life in it. Today, as we celebrate the power of his resurrection, all those dead parts of the body, they'll be quickened in Jesus' name. You're married and then you're not able to perform and then there is no child. They say there's no this, there's no that, there's no child, there's no joy, there's nothing. I'm telling you, this is your day. I said this is your day. Resurrection power is going to work in every part of your body and that dead part of your body will be quickened in Jesus' name. It says if the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in your mortal body that spirit that raised him from the dead it will quicken and make alive your body so that deadness will not be there anymore in Jesus name somebody said my brain is dead I can't get anything at all it's like everything is totally dormant and just wait a minute because resurrection is coming to that brain resurrection is coming into that mind some people my eye nerves are dead and therefore i cannot see at all the lord is going to quicken those dead nerves of their eyes in jesus name what a glorious day to celebrate the resurrection the power of his resurrection in your life and then he'll touch you and touch your family he'll touch you and touch your children he'll touch you and touch your parents he'll touch you and touch members of the church that today that quickening spirit and quickening power will work on everyone in jesus name in, uh, in ephesians chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 4 ephesians chapter 2 we're looking at verse 4 but god who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he has loved us even when we were dead in sins has quickened us together with christ that's the that's the resurrection power of christ even we were dead in sins and you know we didn't even know that what we're doing was wrong totally dead in sin but he says he has quickened us together with the lord jesus christ by grace he has saved thank god i'm saved I said, thank God, I am saved. There's a quickening. There's a making alive. And there's a new life that comes to revival, renewal, righteousness that comes to us because of that resurrection power that walks in us. And then in verse 6, and he has raised us up. And he has raised us up and has raised us up that means you're not a man of the ground anymore a man of the dust anymore that means that you're not lying down helpless before the satan to be trampling marching on you anymore because he has raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in christ jesus made us to sit together in heavenly places in christ jesus now pay attention. I'm going to connect that verse with another verse in chapter 1. Look at chapter 1. Chapter 1. And remember what it says. That you are raised up. Say, I am raised up. Together. I'm made to say it together. Where? Where? With who? In heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now look at chapter 1, chapter 1, chapter 1, verse 20. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him, Christ, from the dead and set him, Christ, at his own right hand. Tell me. Again. Where is Christ? Where are you? Where is Christ? Where are you? Again, where is Christ? Again, where are you? Look at the next verse there. 
in verse 21 far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come you understand christ is seated in heavenly places where am i sitting where are you sitting below all the principalities and powers where if you are far above principalities and powers how can they be working on you you are far above all the principalities and powers and you say the principalities and powers are working at my back they are working in my liver they are working in my instant and they are working everywhere around me i say where are you sitting take your place take your position if you take your position you are seated together with christ in heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come give me a good amen those principalities and powers will never bother you again they know who they are they know who you are you are a man of authority you are a woman of authority your position is far above all their position and every name that is named this morning you are set free in jesus name point number three now is the promise of our resurrection say the promise of my resurrection say that again say that again that promise will be real this day in your life in jesus name the promise of our resurrection the promise of your resurrection the promise of my resurrection we're looking at first corinthians chapter 6 verse 14 first corinthians chapter 6 and we're reading there from verse 14 and god has both raised up the lord and will also raise up us by his own power he will raise us up by his own power there's a certainty in this because this is the promise of God and heaven and earth may pass away but the word of God will never pass away. Look at chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 51. Chapter 15 verse 51 is the promise of our resurrection. The promise of our resurrection. Your own resurrection in particular and today there's a spiritual resurrection and today there is a supernatural resurrection and then finally on the final day there's going to be a glorious final resurrection you'll take part in that in jesus name it says in chapter 15 verse 51 behold i show you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump it says for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised in corruption and we shall be changed and I shall be changed and I shall be changed and I shall be changed and we members of the church born again people saved people sanctified people holy people righteous people redeemed people we're going to be changed in Jesus name and that's why he's telling us there he says oh death in verse 55 where is thy sting oh grave where is thy victory the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law but thanks be to god verse 57 which giveth me the victory which giveth you the victory which giveth us the victory through our lord jesus christ therefore because of that coming resurrection therefore because of the power of resurrection walking in my life already therefore my beloved brethren be ye steadfast unmovable always abounding in the work of the lord for as much as ye you know that your labor is not in vain in the lord your labor will not be in vain your sacrifice will not be in vain your ministry will not be in vain everything you are doing for the lord the world the lord will reward you on that final day in jesus name 
2 Corinthians chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, reading from verse 14. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also. Us also. Me also. Can you say that? Me also. He raised up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you for all things are for your sakes. That the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not. Are you fainting? I said, are you fainting? Look at the glory ahead of you. Why should you faint? And look at the joy ahead of you. Why should you faint? And look at the celebration ahead of you. Why should you faint? And look at the resurrection ahead of you. Why should you faint? Look at the glorification with ahead of you. Why will you ever faint? For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, that is, we're getting older and older, and it appears the outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is renewed day by day for our light affliction, which is but for a moment walketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal and that's what the lord is repairing you for and you'll be there in jesus name we're looking at first thessalonians chapter 4 from verse 14 first thessalonians chapter 4 i'm reading there from verse 14 the promise of our resurrection verse 14 for if we believe thank god i believe thank god i believe for if we believe that christ died and rose again even so also also which also them which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this will say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent or hinder them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout or the voice of the archangel or the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise forth. Resurrection 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 it will happen then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the lord give me a good amen, amen. that time is coming and you are going to be a partaker of that in jesus name First John, First John chapter 3, First John chapter 3, First John chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 1. First John chapter 3, we're looking at it from verse 1. Open your Bible, what a glorious promise he has for you, the promise of your resurrection and the promise of your glorification. Behold, what man of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. What are you today? What are you called today? Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Behold, now are we the sons of God. When will you be the son of God? When are you the son of God? Now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when it shall appear, we shall be like him. We shall be like him. We shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. These eyes of yours, you'll see the Lord in Jesus' name. you see the glory of the Lord in Jesus' name. All the things that are past, they are gone. And the Lord is saying something great, something wonderful is going to happen in your life. Even from now on, every day of your life, that power of resurrection will be working in your life in Jesus' name. Days of sorrow are gone. And days of defeat, they are all gone. And the days of cringing and bending before the enemy, they are all gone. And days of principalities and past walking on your back and walking in your body and walking in your business, disorganize everything, your life and family, all those things are gone in Jesus' name. Because now are we the sons of God, it shall not it does appear yet. What we shall be, but we know that when it shall appear, we shall be like him, because we shall see him, even as he is, and because of 
father was, we have this. Now look at this verse 3 here. It says, and every man, every man, every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. The Lord will purify you. The blood of the Lamb will purify you. Everything you ought to have, everything Calvary has provided, everything the resurrection of Jesus Christ has provided, they are yours today. And they are yours tomorrow. And they are yours this month. And they are yours this year. They are yours for the rest of your life. You wake up every morning, you enjoy that power of resurrection. Any part that is going dead, you say, wake up. Because the power of resurrection is going to walk in your life in Jesus' name. Now I'm going to tell you, to, don't rise up yet. I'm going to tell you to rise up, but don't rise up yet. Because you know, before when you rise up, let's say you are sitting down like this. And I say rise up. When there was no power of resurrection, then you are doing like this. It's like your back is going to break. Then you do this. Say, Pastor, can I sit down? Can I sit down? I say, don't you have power of resurrection there? You say, Pastor, I don't know. Then you are sitting down. Then you are praying as if, you know, the devil is holding your mouth. As if principalities and pastors will not allow you to talk but today I said today I said today I said today that power of resurrection walking in your heart walking in your soul walking in your body and then your back that pain is gone your joints all those pains are gone and the thing that will not allow you to be like a real soldier a person that came out of the grave of the power of the resurrection in your body all those things i cancel them destroy them in jesus name now with that power of resurrection walk in your life rise up and talk like a real person risen resurrected and then you are telling the lord you know where you're seated right now and you know where you are not right now in heavenly places in christ jesus above all principalities and powers above all the powers of darkness above all those things that used to hold you down because now there is the power of resurrection walking your body, walking your life, walking your spirit, walking your soul. The power of resurrection walking our church. Every death thing will come alive. Everything that is bound or pressed will be released and set free because there is a power. There is a power. There is a power of resurrection. There's no pain at your back. There's no pain on your joints. There's no pain in your kidney. There's no pain in your powers. There's no insanity in your brain. There's nothing holding your tongue. The power, the power, the power, the power of resurrection. Partake of that power partake of that power and shake all the dust away from your life and shake all the weaknesses away from your life and shake all those principalities and powers away from your life because the power the power the power the power of resurrection the power of resurrection is working back ache is gone stomach ache is gone all the oppression the head is gone all those things holding you down, they are gone. All the sorrow, everything is gone. All the shame, everything is gone. The power of his resurrection. The power of his resurrection. Cancer is gone. Tuberculosis is gone. HIV AIDS gone. Weakness gone. Defeat gone. You march on those principalities and powers. And you stand in the strength of the Lord. You stand in the might of the Lord. You stand in the glory of the Lord. The spirit that raised up Jesus Christ now dwells inside you. The spirit. The spirit. The spirit that raised up Jesus Christ is dwelling on the inside of you. It will quicken your mortal body. It will quicken your mortal body. It will quicken your mortal body. Raised from the dead. Raised from the dead. Jesus is risen. Jesus is risen. And that resurrection power is transferred into you. That that same power, that same strength, that same courage, that same ability, that same gift, that same grace, that same resurrection, that same righteousness, the same revelation come in your spirit and now you know you are not what you used to be you are not where you used to be 
you are not lying down for something to be pressing you down anymore because now you are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus far above all principalities and all powers yours is a victory you have to reign with him you have conquered with him reign with him because you have conquered with him reign with him seated 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 in heavenly places our resurrection our identification with his resurrection seated in heavenly places in christ jesus all the shame is gone all the sorrow is gone all the consequence of sin that is gone all the fear of coming judgment all that is gone because the lord has taken you out of the grave where you were is placed you by the side of the lord jesus christ and forever and forever and forever and forever and forever to enjoy forever to experience forever to celebrate forever to be a partaker of the power of his resurrection forever 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 your guilt is gone buried thrown away never to come back again the condemnation is gone because of christ because of christ in his resurrection there is justification in his resurrection there is forgiveness in his resurrection there is salvation in his resurrection there's revival in his resurrection there is righteousness in his resurrection there is revelation in his resurrection there is holiness in his resurrection there is grace in his resurrection there is power in his resurrection there's a spiritual ability that comes upon your life resurrection 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 of christ You are no more what you used to be. You are no more sitting where you used to sit. You are no more as weak as you used to be. You are no more a captive like you used to be. You are no more a slave like you used to be. You are no more frightened by principalities and powers like you used to be. Resurrection. 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 You are risen together with the Lord Jesus Christ and he has translated you. He has translated you out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. He has translated you out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Take your place, take your place, take your place, take your place. Don't you let anybody cheat you out of where you are, out of who you are. You are not a slave of Satan. You are the very child of God, son of God, daughter of God. And the glory is upon your life. And the crown is upon your head. He has given you his name. You are a treasure. You are a treasure. You are a treasure. Seated. Seated. Seated in heavenly places together with Christ Jesus. Let that power raise the dead. Let that power heal the sick. Let that power cleanse the lepers. Let that power cast out devil. Let that power make you victorious. Let that power wake you up. Let that power revive you. Let that power make you to take a decision. Forever with the Lord, forever with the Lord, forever, forever, forever with the Lord. The pain of death is cancelled.
the pain of oppression is cancelled free free indeed free free from all yokes free from all bondages free from sin free from sickness free from satan by the power of his resurrection by the power of his resurrection by the power of his resurrection today and tomorrow this week next week this month next month this year next year for the rest of your life the power of resurrection always at work the power of resurrection always at work the power of resurrection always at work Now you are more than a conqueror. Now you, now you, now you are more, more than a conqueror. The Lord has lifted you up, nothing will bring you down. The Lord has raised you up, nothing will pull you down. He'll keep you there, he'll keep you there, he'll keep you there seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus in Jesus name we pray in Jesus' name we pray. Who are you today? I said, who are you today? As you go tomorrow and you walk on the street, no more buying your head. No more cringing. No more crawling for anybody. You stand like a son of God. Yeah. And then you realize, where are you now? I said, where are you now? I said, where are you now? All those people that have powerless powers, are you their equal? Are you their colleagues? Are they above you? All those timid spirits that can't come during the day, they are so timid, they come in the night. And then they come to do some funny things in the night. Are they above you? No. Who is above? I said who is above? I said who is above? Where are you now? Tell me. Tell me. In heavenly places seated together with the Lord Jesus Christ and the word of your mouth is a word of authority. The word of your mouth is a word of power. And where you are seated, your position determines your authority. And when you speak with that position in mind, all those principalities and powers, you'll tread upon them in Jesus' name. I am victorious now. I am victorious now. I am more than a conqueror now. And I command every sickness this in the temple of God. No sickness on my head. No sickness on my chest. No sickness in my tummy. No sickness in my joints. 
they say as you are getting older your joints will be cracking and then you cannot bend your joint look at me here i bend my joint because i'm not like them i am different and if you are like father like children you can bend your joints like me i can bend i can rise up because now i'm seated in heavenly places in the lord jesus christ and i say all sicknesses all infirmities they are funny to me they are strangers they'll never be with me they'll never be with my children they'll never be with our church in jesus name do you still want us to pray i said do you still want us to pray because now it's not only me that can pray now you are seated in the heavenly places to the same authority i have you have that same authority the same power you have that same power the same position you have that same position the same celebration you have that same celebration because we are now one seated together in heavenly places in christ jesus but all the same you give me permission to still pray for you to be the representative of the church even though you can do it we'll do it together why don't you raise up your hand because yours is a victory you're more than a conqueror. Prince, Prince and Pastor will never bother you in your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because of this resurrection you have revealed unto us today. There is a proof, there is a certainty, the evidence that Jesus is risen from the dead. He lives on the inside of us. And because of that, he has given us salvation. He has given us redemption. He has given us forgiveness. He makes us the sons and the daughters of God. And we come to that position and nothing will shift us away out of that position in Jesus' name. We have revealed to us the power of resurrection. And I pray right now in every brother, every sister, every invitee here, every child, every boy, every girl, the power of resurrection will work in every life in Jesus' name. And I pray that your spirit will not be weak. Your soul will not be weak. Your mind will not be weak. Your brain will not be weak. Your body will not be weak. I pray that the power, the strength, the energy coming from, coming from the resurrection of Christ will enter into every one of you now in Jesus' name. <laughs> Satan is defeated. His power is broken. His yoke is broken. And you, the Lord has taken you now out of the dark kingdom of darkness. He has translated you into the kingdom of his dear son. In that kingdom of light, will you ever remain? In that kingdom of power, will you ever remain? In that kingdom of joy and excitement, you'll ever remain in Jesus' name. All the things that affect people in the kingdom of darkness will never affect you anymore. And now, Lord, I bring your people to the reality of the experience you have brought them to through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, seated in heavenly places in christ jesus every brother every sister seated in heavenly places in christ jesus every safe boy every safe girl seated in heavenly places in christ jesus far above principalities and powers and every name that is named lord i pray all those negative things will be under their feet they will be the head and not the tail nobody will be able to oppress them anymore in jesus name and i pray that in the new light that you have got today the new understanding you've got the new power you have got today and this resurrection power working in your life now will keep on walking till we live here keep on walking till we get back home and when we get back home you find anybody sick anybody under any challenge any other captivity these hands you raise up will be anointed you made them on the sick they are going to recover in jesus name and when the day of our celebration comes middle of the year this june this year celebration 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 we shall all celebrate together in jesus name and all of us will come with wonderful testimonies and wonderful stories of what we have done in our lives as a result of the celebration of the miracle of Calvary in this retreat in Jesus' name. 
I pray that this power, this position, this authority, this possession will abide with your people forever. Yeah. Weakness will not come back. Yeah. Tiredness will not come back. Yeah. And Lord, falling and being defeated will never come back. Yeah. Onward ever. Yeah. Forward ever. Yeah. From grace to grace. Yeah. From strength to strength. Yeah. From power to power. Yeah. From glory to glory. Until we all gather together at the feet of Jesus in heaven. Your will be there. Thank you Lord for the answer. In Jesus name we pray. Sons of God, daughters of God. In Jesus name we pray. And all who are seated in heavenly place. Pastor Dada, he has been a father to me. I don't start crying. Okay, um, I remember I came here without um, scholarship to Harvard University. The first year wasn't easy, but I got a grant that paid half of my tuition. But then from second year, I got like five different scholarships from my department. So I just thank God, third year, the same thing. And I thank God because I'll be graduating in May. I didn't have to stay out of the world. I just thank God for all his provision. I just bless you. Pray.